Welcome back to Author's Note. A year ago, the European Central Bank averted a liquidity squeeze in the Eurozone banking system when it gave lenders access to cheap three-year loans under its longer-term refinancing operations. Hundreds of banks took advantage of the offer, borrowing about a trillion from the ECB in December and February. From the end of this month, banks will have the options to start paying back the LTRO. But how many actually will? Joining me to discuss this is Hugh Van Steenus, banking analyst at Morgan Stanley. Welcome. Good morning. Um, so can you just recap where we, where we were a year ago? I mean, so much has changed in the Eurozone. And um, what was the LTRO? What was it all about? Um, Twelve months ago, European banks were caught in a Bermuda Triangle where investors worried about sovereign risk, the Eurozone falling apart, uncontrolled deleveraging, <laughs> and a dramatic change in regulation. And so the funding market sta- started to stop and was stopping out several banks. So the ECB was forced to have an emergency injection of liquidity, providing long-term funds, and in the end, European banks took 1.1 trillion of three-year money. And since then, that's certainly calmed down the markets. And in our view, the banks are starting to head out of this Bermuda Triangle. Should we have a look at the, the first note? Because that sort of shows who, what sort of the, uh, the geographical um, take-up was. So, so, as you say, 1.1 trillion from banks all across the Eurozone. But there's a big difference in where that, where that money sort of was taken, isn't, isn't there? Well, predominantly the issue is, is really in the south. And so two-thirds of the money were taken in Spain and Italy, mm-hmm. and then a further 10% was taken in the rest of the periphery. Clearly, these were the banks where people were most worried about their sovereign risk, and that's why they needed to tap the money and, uh, and, and just try to shore up the, uh, their systems so they didn't delever too quickly. And so were those banks then also borrowing in the sort of public debt markets during, during last year, or what, 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 was, what was the situation? No, because I mean, certainly from pr- probably about uh, summer of uh, uh, the prior year, uh, the bank funding market started to really dry up, such that even some of the French banks, who had formerly been able to access short-term uh, money markets in the States and raise dollars, really struggled even to get more than sort of four-week money from the from US investors. So really there was a drying up of liquidity conditions and that's why the ECB had to act. Mm. So, but in the middle of the year, we've obviously had a big change in sentiment and that was sort of down to Mario Draghi yet again. So the European Central Bank President stepping in and saying sort of some, some, some words that really sort of soothe the markets. What, what impact has that had on issuance? Oh, I think there's been a dro- there's just been a sea change. I mean, our, our view is that we shouldn't underestimate the power of the central banks, mm. and that grown-ups are now once again controlling the uh, the playfields. Um, but bank funding has reopened. Mm. Um, banks are now funding cheap, the cheapest level for three years in Europe, mm. and they're actually trading cheaper than investment grade corporates for the first time in four years. We should probably have a look at our next chart in that case. So um, the next chart sort of shows shows sort of the the, the, the the kind of the change over the year, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, so what you can see is basically up until the LTRO, bank funding costs were growing, leaping and leaping and leaping, more expensive, and that's why there was this fear there was going to be a, an imminent credit crunch, mm. uh, and particularly in the south of Europe. But since the LTRO and um, more recently since the OMT, confidence has been regained. Mm. Investors are once again investing in Italian debt, Spanish debt, both at a sovereign level and a bank level, at a much more affordable cost. And hopefully we think that should free up the credit markets. So what about early repayment of the LTRO? So from next, from the end of the month, they can start paying back early. And you're saying sort of North, Northern European banks more likely to pay back early, whereas Southern European banks, what are they likely yeah, to do? Yeah, no, our view is that probably 100 to 200 billion of, of funds will be repaid. Probably about half the funds the Northern European banks took probably more likely about 10% of what the southern banks took. We think it's a bit more of a minority sport. And certainly if you were them, you might want to keep the insurance policy for a little bit longer. Mm. But I think this will be a further sign of healing and the rehabilitation of banks, which everyone thought were lost. And I still think it's interesting that banks were the best performing uh, sector in the FTSE and the Eurostox last year. And we continue to be very constructive for this year too. Yeah, so it's definitely going to be an interesting next few months to see which banks come out and say, we're going to pay back early. And maybe they won't even come out and say it. Is that... That well, I think what we'll find out from the ECB, every week we'll find out the overall level, and that'll be for the banks themselves to choose. Mm. I think the ECB and the banks themselves are keen not to have too much stigma. Yes. So I think the ECB in some ways would actually prefer banks not to say who's repaying right. and actually leave it as a much more gradual, natural repayment so there isn't more stigma attached back to these. If there's stigma, then the system hasn't worked. Thanks very much, Hugh. And uh, I think it's very interesting to see how much has happened in the Eurozone over the past year.